Awesome. Uh, I've been waiting for this uh, with bated breath, and uh, I told Joe saying, if cybersecurity is going to be last on the list, then I'm very disappointed. Uh, because if you think about it, everything else that we've talked about for the last two, day, two days, all the different tracks, will come to a full, full stop if cybersecurity is not top of mind. So that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about actually flipping cybersecurity because that's what we do at AdSign, because why not, all right? So <clears throat> let me start with a <clears throat> personal story. So as I was uh, packing up to come to Bangalore, and I come from uh, Silicon Valley, so this is a mail that I get. So it, it comes from uh, a certain company writing on behalf of my healthcare provider. And basically what it says is that my data has been compromised. And if any of you have heard about the Move It attack that happened six months ago, six months ago, keep that in mind, um, my data was apparently part of that. And when do I get to know about it? I get to know about it in November, right? So that's a personal, this is the first time I've probably gotten a letter like this, but a few things I noted out of this letter. First thing is, there's no apology, you know? I mean, there's no empathy at all uh, from my uh, healthcare provider saying, Anthony, we lost your data, uh, you know? No, sorry, nothing. Second thing is, it's six months old. I mean, you, you don't know what else is going on in this particular attack. And then, what do they offer to me as steps I can take? steps I am supposed to take for a data leak that happened with one of their vendors. They are offering me 12 months of identity protection. That's what they're offering me. And what am I supposed to do with that, right? So this is the state of cybersecurity, at least uh, at a personal level. But I want to talk about, before I get into that, a little bit more about myself. I mean, I've met I, I think at least 50% of you in the last two days, but those of you who haven't met me, I come from a company called AtSign. I heard Colin, who was one of our co-founders, speak a couple of times, so I'll kind of reiterate the same themes. But I'm new to the whole startup world. I, I've been here only for the past five years or so. And uh, little did I imagine five years ago that I'll be here talking cybersecurity, so, but that tells you anything's possible. So I come from the consulting world, and um, I've, been, I've had the luxury to work with some of the biggest brands out there. And uh, I've heard people at the topmost levels talk about cybersecurity and just put it away for some time later. I've been in the room in discussions with CIOs who say, let's see if you have money. Let's see if you have time. Those have been the sort of conversations that have happened, I mean, for the longest time. I mean, I've been around for 20 plus years doing tech, and this has exactly been the same case 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but surely but uh, off late, people have started to take a little bit more uh, heed to cybersecurity. So the current state of cybersecurity, right? I mean, you saw a little example in my case, but I did a little bit of digging, data digging from the last year or so. So what does the data say? We've had close to 1,000 attacks in the last year or so. And keep in mind, these are the attacks that we only know of. I mean, all the attacks that have been published and said there has been a data breach. And just in this particular month, or just the last month, because the data for November is still being aggregated, you have about 100 plus attacks just in the last month or so, right? And just the numbers speak for themselves, right? I mean, it's like billions of data records out there that are out there in the internet for all of you to go see. And then on the left-hand side, you see the top three attacks. I mean, unfortunately, number one and three are very close to here in India. The first one happened, I mean, I think a lot of your data records, I mean, are out there in the internet, right? So it happened with a COVID breach. Uh, the 23andMe is well advertised. And then uh, the Red Cliff Labs as well, right? So out of the 100 odd data breaches that have happened this month that are recorded, two out of the top three have happened here in India, right? So a serious problem. And I spoke about Moveit earlier, which is where my data got impacted. The, the full impact of that particular attack 
is still being determined, TBD. Every day we are still uncovering companies coming out and saying, oh, my data, your data was breached as part of uh, the, the move it attack, right? I mean, it was a simple breach, it was a file transfer. They fixed it within five minutes, but the breach, I mean, the damage was done in five minutes, right? So that's how big the scale of cybersecurity is uh, in the world we live in today. So why is this? I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, it's still an afterthought. Cybersecurity, like Joe's, is <laughs> still an afterthought, right? Most businesses, people, governments, still don't pay much attention to cybersecurity. The biggest thing, according to me, is people need to treat cybersecurity as an investment. It is still treated as an OPEX cost, a CAPEX cost, a, as part of the budgets, right? I mean, and a lot of times, it is on the bottom of the list. I mean, you want to do, obviously, revenue-generating projects for the company, but unless cybersecurity is treated with a little more respect, I mean, it is going to be a problem. <clears throat> the other thing you'll notice, if you look around the space of cybersecurity, I'll talk about what the vendors are focused on as well, is very little R&D has gone in in the last 20, 30 years with respect to um, cybersecurity. I've been in probably 10, 15 different shows this year focused on cybersecurity, and the themes have been very common, and partly because nobody is asking for newer tech. People are content with firewalls. People are content with VPNs. You know, old technologies is what they're living with. So that's the part I'm uh, talking about next, which is what are the vendors talking about? So if you look at the vendor landscape today, people who say they are focused on cybersecurity, they say we'll help you with attack surface management. So, I mean, you take this building, I mean, how many attack surfaces are there? Probably plenty, right? All the sensors connected to the internet, all the cameras connected to the internet, all the gateways connected, so many attack surfaces just in this room. Are they all protected? We don't know. But what is a company like Ritz probably asking the vendor, help me protect all this, right? Is what they're asking. I'll help you with vulnerability management. If something goes wrong, let me help you with fixing it, is how people are looking at uh, cybersecurity today. And then the last one you see there is identity protection, like what I was offered. You know, my data is out there, but people offer me identity protection to protect what, whatever my data is out there. So just a few numbers, and some of these numbers are super mind-boggling. So if you take the technology investments that have happened in the last uh, year or so, or set aside for 2023, it is $4.3 trillion. However, if you just take the numbers that have been set for cybersecurity, is a billion, right? I mean, it's $19 billion. You see the disparity in just the numbers when it comes to setting aside for cybersecurity. However, you take the other side of the coin, the cyber attacks, you know, the pain that we go through every day, it's $8 trillion. Just let that sink in. So yesterday we were talking about India becoming the third largest economy. Uh, well, I have news for you. The, the cyber crime market is trying to be, be, it's actually the third biggest economy right now. That's how big it is right now, right? So almost $300,000 are being spent per second trying to pay for at least a ransom or trying to fix for a cybersecurity incident that has happened out there. So just, just before I came over to the stage, I mean, I saw something on LinkedIn. Uh, a company called Meridian Link was attacked by a company called Black Cat. And what Black Cat is claiming is that Meridian Link did not report to the SEC within four days of them being attacked. So the hacker is actually asking Meridian Link, whom they already attacked, to pay a fine. Just, just think about the state of it, right? I mean, that's the world we live in today. Right? I mean, it's, it's just getting worse by the day. So I don't have to explain this huge disparity. I mean, this line actually should have fallen. It should have been 90 degrees. So that's, that's, that's where we, we are with a world of uh, investments in cybersecurity and the cost of pain that it causes us. So what's the net summary, right? I mean, much like uh, the healthcare industry, and uh, I see John T. back in the day, back, back out there, I mean, he would tell us saying wellness is important, cybersecurity wellness is important. But where are we spending all our money right now? In the cure business, right? Everyone is trying to spend money after the fact, 
So the cure industry of cybersecurity is way, way bigger than the prevention business of cybersecurity. So what are we going to do about it? That's a real question we want to ask ourselves, right? So if you thought this is going to be easy, guess what? The problem is going to be much, much bigger. Why? If you take the world of the internet today, uh, I need two more minutes, sorry. I'm, my time's up already. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, uh, ah, OK, cool. Thanks to the speakers who didn't show up. <laughs> All right, so the puzzle is going to get bigger. Why? Because, I mean, much like in India, a lot of Asia and Africa are still not connected to the Internet. So we're going to add about 1.5 billion more people connected to the Internet. And add to that our teenagers and our children who want phones. I mean, that number is going to get bigger and bigger. And next comes the world of IoT, right? I mean, today you can get three sensors for 10 bucks or eight bucks on Amazon. And it can measure humidity, it can measure temperature, and it's gonna be quadrupling over the next five, 10 years. All of those guys are gonna connect to the internet. Why is that important? Each of them become an attack surface. You know, if you've kept track of this market, I mean, uh, Target, which is one of the biggest retailers in the US, was attacked through a sensor sitting in one of their warehouses, that sensor was measuring humidity. It was probably a $15 sensor, but it cost probably a half a billion dollar hack. So you have a choice to make, right? You either choose the donut or you choose the apple, right? So you either work for the cure or you try to prevent any attack in the first place, right? So that's the food for thought for you. So if you believe in prevention, if you chose the apple, at sign can help. So who are we? Colin already spoke a little bit about it, so I'll give you a summary. So we are a networking 2.0 protocol. It's open source. It is uh, like the pipes that needs to transfer data from point A to point B. We spoke about cryptography. It is double encrypted, and it can take from any point to any point fully encrypted and without anybody snooping in. So you can imagine us like digital public infrastructure for everybody on the planet, right? Real infrastructure for everybody in the planet. And then how are everyone addressed? We call them by an at sign, like Colin said, at Colin. My at sign is at Anthony. So I can talk from at Anthony to at Colin on the at protocol. It is decentralized. So you'll see shortly in a diagram that I explain. And uh, scale is important. We, we read about uh, the number of people coming on the internet and the IoT devices. So we've actually built this by design for more than 50 billion endpoints, right? So it is built for the future. It is super resilient. And you can actually build whatever you imagine on it. As much as it's a protocol, we have an SDK in several languages. You can pick it up, and if you can imagine a customer experience, you can build a healthcare app. You can build a retail app. You can build whatever you like using our technology. But it'll give you all the elements of security that I'll be talking about very soon. This is a simple illustration. Assume Joe's has a water meter in his house. He's a smart, smart water meter in his house. And he wants to give access to the company that actually is uh, manufactured that water meter so that uh, it can measure the, the health of that water meter. But at the same time, the government of Bangalore wants to know how much water he is using, he can cryptographically send messages to all these different parties. He might have 10 different endpoints, but he can, sorry, data points, but he can choose to send only two that are relevant to each of these parties. And if he doesn't trust somebody one day, he can actually stop sending them data as well. So this is a very simple way to imagine what we do. And what you see in the bubble in the cloud is the digital public infrastructure, the private infrastructure that we provide. And why is this super unique is because you see the keys at the end, edge. All our keys are cut at the edge. There's no centralized key management whatsoever. Even us as that sign have no way to see what, what keys you, uh, what are your encryption keys, if you will. So there's zero network attack surface on the edge point, whether it's your IoT device or you as a person. Nobody can attack you. So those are some of the principles. I mean, everybody says help manage attack surfaces. Our philosophy is, why have an attack surface? Everybody says, we'll give you full visibility, 
Our approach is slightly nuanced. We say we'll give you full visibility, but whoever doesn't have to see it, it'll be totally invisible. And no centralized key management. And then speaking of sustainability, it's super important here because with this technology, you can say goodbye to VPNs, you can say goodbye to firewalls, and you can go look at the data center bills that are used by VPNs and firewalls. It'll save a ton of money for anyone looking to do that from a data center standpoint. So a quick illustration. So imagine if you're a city manager and you have this particular dashboard of managing the city, you can see basically everything you want to see. However, if you're a hacker trying to look at the same data points in the city, this is what you see using at sign tech. Absolutely nothing. Assume you're a business owner, you're trying to do, you're doing a logistics business, trying to keep track of you know, your vans and uh, your buses running in San Francisco. You can see the routes, real-time data. What does the hacker see? This is what your hacker sees. Absolutely nothing, right? So you don't have to take our word for it. We've actually pen tested this with uh, uh, a very renowned pen testing org in the UK, uh, ex-military folks who've done this. Basically, they said, we, we don't know what to pen test. It was their quote to us. And then they did four weeks of pen testing. They just could not find any way to penetrate. Same thing with automated and pen tests. So it's, it's been through the whole rigor. So who's using us today? A whole array of use cases, right from governments to healthcare use cases to Industry 4.0 to the LoRaWAN community, which is a gateway, if you're not aware of it. And a few implementations. We've recently used it uh, with NGOs in the Ukraine war to send data back and forth uh, in, inside the border, outside the border. A lot of cybersecurity device companies use us for remote access with zero uh, attack surfaces. And then uh, buildings, smart buildings, in, uh, especially in Singapore and APAC is a really good pull for us. So we, we work with a number of those hardware vendors. So our view is the total opposite of what you saw the market look at. Our view is prevention is better than cure, right? So you have a choice to make. So your choice is either be ready for a letter like this or start using a tech, you know? Thank you very much.